Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Are you excited to get the Grand Canola Generator Chamber to work? Because I am, and I think, I'm pretty dang sure, I figured out a way to fix my problem with the automatic precision dropper and trying to make sure it drops one of each seed and no more. I think I figured it out. So let me show you what I've done. First thing I've done is I set it in XNet. I have two separate channels for extracting the seeds from the chests and putting them into the dropper. One channel just to extract the crystallized canola seed and the other channel just to extract the empowered canola seed. So I'm extracting one of each and it's set specifically to only keep one in the destination inventory. And then on the insert side, when I'm inserting, I have it set to do one operation on a redstone pulse. So in other words, when this connection that's on the oil seed dropper, the precision dropper that I'm using, when that connection receives a single redstone pulse, it is going to do one operation of this insert. I didn't know you could double click to highlight it. Cool. It's going to do one operation of this insert and also one operation of this insert. And that operation is going to put one, uh, one empowered canola seed in there and also one crystallized canola seed in there. So basically my idea was to control the insertion of the seeds instead of trying to control the automatic precision dropper. And it seems to have worked out pretty well. So now what that means is this thing can just be set to just go and just drop whenever it wants to. So the only thing we have to make sure is that we only insert the seeds at the right time. So we only want to send a pulse to the connector here when we want to drop the seeds. And this here, by the way, is a redstone proxy. I'm not actually sure that it's required. Um, it's a block of XNet. Does it describe it here? It doesn't describe it there. Uh, but basically, it doesn't actually have any function itself. It just reads in redstone and allows the connector to connect to the block and read the redstone value on the block. Because I don't think it can read redstone powder itself. I think it needs the proxy for it. Although I think it can, we've seen in the past, it can directly read a redstone torch. The connector will actually connect to it, right? Uh, yeah, like that. But I don't think it'll do the same for redstone powder, hence the redstone proxy. So it's just a helper. Point of that is just to get the redstone signal into the connector. So again, when we want to drop seeds, we want to send a pulse to here. And it will just automatically insert one of each seed, and this thing is always set to go, so it's just going to drop them. So now the problem becomes, how do we make a pulse happen only when we want it to? Well, we already know from what I've done in the past. This is a detector that detects the presence of the empowered oil. So when this is sending a signal, we have the right type of oil here and we don't want to drop seeds. So we do not want to do an insert when this thing has a signal going, which means this is going to be off. We do want to do an insert and drop seeds when this is not outputting a signal. When this is not outputting a signal, this is going to be on because we have that the not gate right here. So in other words, when this signal is on, when it comes online, we want to send a pulse to there. And that's what this weird doohickey does. I am completely unfamiliar with default Minecraft redstone mechanics for the most part, and little contraptions that you can make to make certain gates and things like that, so I had to research this one online. But I found it, and this is basically, it's, I don't know what you call it exactly, but it's basically a rising edge pulser, or something like that. Rising edge meaning when the signal comes on, when this turns on, it will send a pulse. And only when it turns on. It won't send a pulse when it turns off, it'll only send a pulse when it turns on. So when this is on, the signal hits this block of iron, and this block could be many things. I just happen to make a block of iron. It hits the block of iron, and because the block of iron is actually apparently able to transmit redstone signals, I guess, I think some things are insulated from transferring redstone signals and other things can actually transfer them through it. I believe the block of iron can transfer it through it. So the signal hits the block of iron, it transfers through it, hits this redstone repeater, which just delays it by one tick, and then it goes up here. Now that's just sending an on signal, so what makes it pulse, right? What makes it turn back off? 
Well, it's the fact that underneath here we have a sticky piston. So the redstone here both instantaneously travels through the block of iron into the redstone repeater and also activates the sticky piston at the same time. That causes the piston to move up, moving the block of iron to up here and making it so that instead of the block of iron being here in between the signal and the repeater, we have the extended arm of the sticky piston, which does not transmit redstone signals. So instantaneously it activates this, thereby cutting off the signal, but also activates the signal. So it turns on very, very briefly, and then immediately turns off because this thing has extended. And that's what makes it a pulse. I can demonstrate that. Let's use a redstone torch. So I have to go here. Yes, yeah, so if you look at the redstone on the right, over there, if you notice it's pulsing. It goes on and off very briefly. Yep, so it's doing what we want it to do. Now that's as far as I've tested it. I haven't actually tested it truly running. So, gonna have to do that. And to do that, I need to set this to... Oh wait, I actually... No, no, that's fine, that's fine. That's just because I put a pulse into it, so it's got seeds in it, but it won't have that normally. So let's test this for real. That's on deactivation, so this thing should always be active. We want it to just always drop whatever's inside of it. And I also set this fluid collector to pulse, just to make it stop doing anything. So I'm going to set this to deactivate, which means it should just collect this. And then everything should start running until this fills up. Let's hope. Hmm? I saw the seeds drop, but then they just, like, disappeared. What... What just happened? Okay, I think I figured out what the problem was. The problem was that the fluid collector was actually collecting the fluid too fast for the sensor to be able to sense it. And that's why it was just suddenly stopping. So, so what I'm gonna try, and I haven't tested this yet, but I set it to only respond to pulses, so it's only going to collect fluid when it receives a pulse. And back here, I split off the signal for when we want to send in the seeds. So when we send in the seeds, the signal also goes over here, goes through a bunch of repeaters set to max. That's going to delay it by 12 ticks, 12 twentieths of a second. And then, hopefully, send the pulse to the collector. Guaranteeing that there's a little bit of a delay between sending the seeds and collecting. And I can always add more, more uh, repeaters if I need to, slow it down some more. So let's try it. I put a button here so I don't have to destroy stuff to make a pulse happen. Hmm. Oh, it's full. That would explain it. I feel so bad to just delete all the fluid, like, instantly. But it's okay. Plenty more where that came from. The fact that the whole system stops working when it fills up is bad. Because it's going to fill up at some point. Unless... No, it's going to fill up. When it fills up, I need it to just pause. That's not going to work. Well, let's see if at least it solved the problem I think it did. What? <laughs> what just happened? This button's activating it. Ugh. Oh. Okay, fine. We will destroy this then. I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. <laughs> the dropping of the seeds works fine, now I've got to figure out the dang fluid collector. Aha! Uh -huh. I think it works? It filled up, right? Yeah, it filled up. Okay. Yeah, the fix was actually really simple. I was kind of overcomplicating it. I was trying to use, like, the sensor and try to combine signals and stuff, but no. Um, the solution was actually just right here. It was literally a single piece of redstone. So it used to be like this. And the solution is just to do this. Apparently it was not reading the redstone from down here. It has to be, I guess, on top of it or near... I, I don't know. It's always confusing how things read it, you know? Like, will it read this that's next to it? Will it read it if it's next to it but below it or above it? Or does it have to be on it? It's like, ah. 
Who knows, but I was not reading that, and it does read this. Now what does this do? Well, when this is set to deactivation, when this thing is receiving a redstone signal, it will not collect fluid. And when it receives a redstone signal, is after this sensor turns off. So after this sensor has sensed, the redstone signal is sent over here, and it deactivates it. I don't know if that's a great explanation, but basically this thing cannot possibly take action until after this sensor has sensed. So that should work. It looked like it was working. Let's... Well, now that the redstone's there, I can't just do that. Yeah, that works flawlessly. Beautiful. Why does it have such an odd number of buckets? 7007, how is that possible? Huh, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I, th I think I've created a damn elegant system. It's pretty elegant. I know it looks like Swiss cheese back there, but I can fill all of that in back there. Doesn't need to be there anymore. Created a system that's pretty damn resilient. It'll just keep going. And if it can't keep going because something's filled up, like the fluid collector, which will happen, definitely. When I'm not using that much power, then it just stops and it pauses, and it doesn't need to be restarted in any special way. It just will start going again. As soon as this thing can collect, then the sensor turns off, and then everything starts going again. I'm so proud of this. This is awesome. Okay, um, I want to do one thing here. I should have some upgrade kits. Yeah, connector upgrade kit. I know I used this once before for logic. It didn't actually help with logic, but one way I can increase the speed of this whole system a little bit is by upgrading this connector. I hope that didn't wipe it or anything. Like the settings. I don't think so. Just everything changed color and it's disturbed me. I don't want to have to set it up again. No, it's fine. Oh wait, this is not going to do what I want it to do, is it? No, the insert side doesn't need the advanced connectors. I'm not sure how or if I even can take the advanced connector off, so I'm just not going to. Uh, I need to put it on the chests. So I want to extract from the chests a little bit faster, because the faster I can insert into that dropper, the faster the whole process will be. So on my extracts from the chests... So right now it's doing it every 20 ticks. I believe with it upgraded I can set it to 10, yes. So it should make it a little bit faster. Definitely, because you notice before sometimes it would take a little bit of time for the dropper to actually drop. Now it's significantly faster, at most it takes about a half second for stuff to start dropping. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay, well, um, I think now it's time to set up the generators and just start pumping the stuff into the generators, huh? Alright, I've got the oil generators set up. All hooked up to the network and ready to go. I just need to enable the channel. And when I do that, everything should start in motion. Boop. Yep, taking that empowered oil very quickly. Faster than it can make it, which is good. These are starting to fill up. That's got some, that's got some. Hasn't quite gone everywhere yet. Yeah, you can see these are filling up extremely fast with power. They only hold 50,000 RF and a 350 RF per tick. That does not take long. So now at this point, they should stop burning because they're filled. 
But they'll keep filling up with empowered oil. Looks like we're mostly full now. So that is definitely, undoubtedly going to make empowered oil fast enough to supply all the generators. Should start to get a surplus pretty soon. Yeah, they're almost awful. So that's beautiful. Uh, oh, this thing's running out because it's not daytime, so this thing, the mechanical user can't run. There we go. So yeah, definitely need to fix that. Let's see how fast it makes the empowered versus uses it. Oh, well, now it's filled. I'd say it's roughly equal, though. About the same rate. And these, of course, are not a problem at all. These can be made just super fast. Well, holy crap, I think I've got a system. Alright, let me hook up these oil generators to the power. So we can actually start using the power. Alright, they're all hooked up, and I'm just about to hook it up to the power system when I connect it to this relay. However, I just want to mention before I do this that we are going to have a problem. It's going to work, but the problem is it's going to be incredibly inefficient. And let me show you what the problem is before I describe why it's so inefficient. Alright, we now have almost limitless power. The problem is... You see this one's running? You can see the little particles. It's going. Probably some of the others are as well. I guess the power draw isn't quite enough. Okay, so this one keeps going. I guess for some reason this one's getting priority and going first. Because it seems to be the only one going, but here's what's happening. If you notice, it's just going to keep going. It's using up fuel, and it's using up fuel, and it's using up fuel, but as far as you can tell, it doesn't need power, right? So the problem is in how these use fuel. They're pretty dumb about it. So, so long as the RF is not 100%, if it's even below 100% by just one RF, if it's 49,999 RF, if it could possibly store more power, it's going to burn fuel and use it up to try to restore that power. The problem is that the problem with that is by burning one fuel, in reality it's generating I, I don't know how long that's going for and how much it's generating, but I don't know, let's say like 20, 30,000 RF or something every time it consumes fuel. And it produces it so fast that the tiny, tiny amount of RF that we're taking away from this, it's topping it up and it's going way overboard. And then as soon as it's done going overboard, the RF goes down imperceptibly by a tiny amount and it just instantly uses more and tries to make up for that fact. So we don't want it to do what it's doing. We don't want it to just keep using fuel and wasting the vast majority of it. Almost none of that fuel is actually going to generating power. Barely any of it. Thankfully, it does seem to be the only one that actually is having that problem. Thankfully, it's not all of them. But if we wanted to make this intelligent, we would do something like uh, probably... Well, I can actually read how much power is in them. Okay, you know what? I think I might be able to do this with XNet, actually. Let me check if I can do this with XNet logic. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit more complicated. Okay, I think I've come up with a plan that should work using the logic channel and also using an HV capacitor. So I changed it up and I made it so that every single one of these goes to a single HV capacitor, which holds 4 million RF. And then the capacitor goes out to the main line. And what that does is it consolidates all of our power into one spot, which I then put a connector onto, an XNet connector, and I then used as a sensor in a logic channel. So here's what I did. I made it so that every single insert into the oil generators will only keep a max of 50 millibuckets of the empowered oil in each one, and that's exactly how much it uses for one, like one use of fuel is 50 millibuckets. So at most, we'll have enough fuel to burn once. And on the extract side, I made it so that we only extract the fuel to put into them on green. And then in the logic channel, for the sensor I have on the battery, 
I have a sensor that sees how much energy is in there. And if the energy is less than 2 million, so if the battery is less than half full, it's going to output green, thereby causing the power or the fuel to extract, thereby causing all the generators to get just a little bit of fuel. Enough fuel that it should very, very quickly charge up the battery, therefore tick, uh, ticking off the green sensor. Therefore, these will no longer get any fuel. Therefore, they shouldn't waste anything. I think it's going to work. However, to test it, I need to run out all these buffers. You can see they're very, 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 very slowly running out of energy. Because I need this battery to go below half and see how it behaves. So, let's simulate something very extreme happening. Let's simulate maximum power usage. Um, there we go. So we do want to connect to there. Yeah. Let's say that we're utilizing our system to the absolute max. And the max for the high voltage wires, by the way, is about 4000 RF per tick. By the way, we're actually generating. We can generate with these oil generators a bit more than we can actually possibly use by the connectors. We're actually limited by the connectors a little bit. I think 16 generators gives you around 5,000 something RF. Anyway, I have an energy trash can, which I've never used before, but for testing purposes, it's actually pretty useful, I guess. Other than testing, I can't imagine any situation in where you'd want to throw away energy. All right, so when I connect this, this should throw away energy as fast as possible. That thing's already empty. Okay, so now we're... Yeah, now you can see they're all going. <laughs> because they're all getting the power sucked out of them. But again, this battery's power should not be touched. What? We should be generating more power than we could possibly transmit. Maybe it's because they're not all running. A little bit odd, though. Our input should be the same rate as the output, I would think. Hmm. Well, anyway, I gotta wait a bit for this to equalize. I gotta get each one of these down to, like, no or 50 millibuckets of oil, and then I'll be right back and see if it works. Okay, now we're down to 50 millibuckets. So these are now toggling between getting rid of the 50 millibuckets and then instantly getting filled. So we see that these are not wasting any energy, they're not overfilling, in the case of us literally maxing out our power system, using all the power possible. So that's good. So now let's see what happens if I cut this off and we just stop using power. What I want to see is that this battery fills up very quickly, but these internal buffers do not get to max before it stops. If they do get to max, then that means we're wasting energy. So, let's see. This thing, you see it's filling up very rapidly. God, that's so much energy. Already up to 1 million. So we're not above 2 million, so this should continue to get oil, and it does. Now we're at 2 million, so this should no longer get refilled, and it doesn't. So it should overshoot a little bit. Mm. Okay, so it undershoots it a little bit. That's right, that's an easy fix. I'm just going to make it sure that it keeps 100 millibuckets in each one. Okay, changed it to 100 millibuckets. Should make it shoot a little bit higher. So let's reconnect this. Get it below... Get it below 2 million. Okay, this should start to get filled. Might take a little bit. Oh, 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 I didn't re-enable the channel. They should get filled with 100 millibuckets, they do. Now let's see how much this goes over 2 million. We want it to hopefully fill up and then start to fill up the internal buffers a little bit, would be ideal. Now they should stop receiving oil, but they're gonna keep coasting on what they do have. It's gonna burn again. It's probably going to stop short still, but definitely better. Okay, 3.4. That's fine. Yeah, so now I've made a system that has no waste. It's no longer wasting any energy whatsoever. Now, ideally, I'd have a much bigger battery bank than just this one capacitor. 
Uh, but unfortunately, with immersive engineering capacitors, it's a little bit hard because it really does simplify things for me to have one source of power and therefore just one sensor to determine the overall percentage of power. So I can't really do that with immersive engineering, multiple batteries. Um, however, when I do get into Ender IO capacitors, these things, when I get into these, it'll be much easier because these are actually multi-block structures. You can put as many of them together as you want. They form one structure and you can read, therefore, one power value, one power percent. Or one power percentage, rather. Okay, so that is the canola power system finished. That's it. There we go. Now it's hooked up to the main system. Gonna start to very, very, very slowly drain power. We can't even see how much it's draining. We basically never have to worry about power again for quite a while. To break it in, let's see how fast the arc furnace is. Remember when I did the Osmeridium ingots? I did them off camera, but remember I mentioned it took it was gonna take literally probably like hours to do one ingot? Well, let's see what happens. So Osmeridium was Osmium and Iridium dust. Now most likely it is going to still overload our power system. It's probably gonna use more than 4,000 RF a tick. But it should still be way faster. Put the dust there. Let's put this here. And, oh, it's actually not overloading our power system yet. You can see the power is still full. Yeah, look at how slow that is. My god, I mean, that's way, 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 way faster than it was before, where it's going to literally take hours, but even with it receiving absolutely full power, it's still only at 6% to make one ingot. That's amazing. Ah, stop raining. I love the toggle rain button. Makes everything look so gloomy and depressing. So let's see how it's doing now that I'm actually using up the power. Are these running? Nope. Is this hooked up to the power system? Oh, you know what? It might be... It's probably using the battery banks first. Remember all those battery banks I have over there? Yeah, it's hooked up. It's just using the battery banks first. Chances are those are pretty empty at this point. Let's go see. Mm. It looks like it's picking and choosing this one specifically to drain from. I guess it doesn't drain from them all equally, but it does them kind of in turn. The rest are full. This one's being drained. So after these <laughs> stop draining, then I think it would start using our power system down there. Well, anyway, I feel very, very happy about that canola system. It's fantastic. Now I can turn back on a bunch of stuff. Like, I stopped using the Crucible pretty long ago, because it just takes so much power, but now I could just leave it going. I should install some upgrades in this thing, too. I can definitely give this speed augmentations and make it use more power. Got power to spare. Let me think of what I want to do next. Oh yeah, courtesy of the many furballs from the cats. I had over a hundred when I gathered them. I got another name tag. Combine that with the name tag that I got from a dungeon at some point. And I named the puppers. Growlithe and Arcanine. I think that's what I want to do next. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to make a chisel and bits. Or, I guess, two chisel and bits. Dog houses. And instead of how I did it before, kind of showing you the whole process of making them, this time I kind of want it to be a surprise until the very end, until I've finished. So I'll see you in just a minute when I finish the dog houses. And they're done. That was no time for you, but seriously, that took me like an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it's so worth it. Look at them. They're not just dog houses in the sense that they're houses for the dogs, but the houses themselves are also dogs. They're dog houses. I have to admit, it's not quite what I envisioned. I basically did the whole back body and then I was trying to think of what to do for the face and that's when I realized, oh, I have no idea what to do for the face. I couldn't think of anything that I could build for the face that wouldn't just completely block the entrance and make it so you couldn't get inside. So I just put a tiny little dog face at the top of each. 
And they have the individual names for each dog. Growlithe and Arcanine. Nice little step up. And each one has food and water. And some pink wool to make a nice little bedding. I love it. Beautiful. Alright. Growlithe, this one is yours. There you go. Yeah. Here, why don't you get more into the center? There you go. There, I wanted them to turn so they weren't just staring at the wall. And Arcanine, let's put you in your home. And there we go. I'm so proud of these. I have literal dog houses and an awesome cat house. Beautiful. Speaking of, how many hairballs do we have? <laughs> 58 or 3? 53. Alright, well I think this is a good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, once again I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I'm sure it's going to be something interesting.